starts right now. New this morning, San Antonio police searching for an overnight robbery suspect. Details on what we now know about this investigation. Well, I thought it was a big mistake. Uh, we are on the downside. We probably got about three more months ahead of us to get this disease conquered. Plus, some local leaders across the state of Texas are not happy with the governor's decision to repeal the mask mandate. Just ahead, we're hearing more from Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf on why he thinks it was a bad move. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, already up to 50 degrees this morning. What is the rest of the day? What does the work week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, good morning. 8 o'clock this Sunday, March 7th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. The sun is out up to 50 degrees. Sunday fun day. I'm surprised you didn't run up to the roof earlier to take a picture. The sunrise was beautiful and we were watching it and I could just see Max being like, I gotta get that So photo. for those who don't <laughs> know, love sunrises, try because I'm usually asleep by sunset. Sun, <laughs> vampire. Sun, <laughs> sunrises, I run up to the roof, take a picture, get the city in the background. The problem is sunrise usually happens at like 6.42. And it's quick. And it's super fast. So Sarah Spivey, what are we seeing for the rest of the day? Sunshine <laughs> for go. the rest of the day. You know, it was a beautiful sunrise and I'll have the time lapse for you in just a bit. This morning though, it is chilly outside. We started off at 45 degrees. We're already warming up to near 50 degrees around San Antonio. It's 49 at the airport, 45 in a Lotus, 47 at JBSA Randolph. Temperatures are still in the 30s up in Kerrville and in Comfort. Uh, we did not have a freeze this morning in the hill country, which is good news, but temperatures dip, dip down into the 30s out there. 41 in Tarpley, 46 in Hondo, 47 in Pleasanton. It is pleasantly dry outside. Dew points are in the 30s and in the 40s this morning. That low humidity is going to stick with us all day long, and it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful Sunday. For now, though, I want to take a look out west. Right now in San Antonio, we're experiencing total sunshine and there's total sunshine for Hondo, Uvalde and Carrizo Springs, but there are some clouds around Del Rio. It's 52 degrees and Del Rio is experiencing overcast skies, but by the afternoon Del Rio, you will be seeing plenty of sunshine here in San Antonio. This is our forecast for the day. As I told you, a beautiful day, 57 at 10, 65 at noon, 70 for the high temperature, southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour, and it'll be a nice and cool and even with temperatures in the 50s in the week ahead, though, we are going to see an end to the low humidity, but that doesn't necessarily translate into rain chances. I'll have a look at that work week coming up shortly in just a few minutes, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, in your top stories, police are on the search for a man. They say robbed a Circle K store near the medical center. That's right. Officers called out to the area 1:30 this morning in the store in the 8100 block of Fredericksburg Road. This is what we know now. Police tell us a man walked inside, acted like he had a gun in his pocket. He demanded that the clerk empty the money from the register and give the money to the suspect. After the clerk followed the directions, that suspect ran off. And right now, police still searching for him. Well, San Antonio police were called out to I-10 East in Balcones Heights around 2 o'clock this morning after they say a vehicle slammed into the back of an SAPD unit that caused the driver to hit the eastbound divider, but it didn't make him stop. Police say the driver got out of their vehicle, jumped the wall divider, and made a run for it across the westbound lanes of I-10. Officers were able to catch up with the suspect and arrest him at a nearby embassy suites. The officer wasn't in their unit at the time and is OK. The driver hasn't been identified, but could face multiple charges, including failing to stop and render aid and resisting arrest. Plus, that driver will also be evaluated for DWI. And speaking of police, SAPD asking for your help trying to find 44 year old Mark White. He was last seen on February 20th in the 10,000 block of Sahara. If you have any information to help police, you are asked to call SAPD's Missing Persons Unit. That number on your screen, 210-207-7660. Let's take a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers here in Bear County. At last report, local health officials say we had another 137 cases of the virus, along with four more deaths. Meanwhile, there are 301 patients admitted into our hospitals, with 138 of them on ICU, in the ICU, and 72 on ventilators. And on the vaccine front this morning, the Texas Department of State Health Services is saying that we are expecting about a million more doses to arrive this week. About 30,000 doses set to come to San Antonio and Bear County, and they are divided up for vaccine clinics around the Alamo City. As of now, unclear when that Johnson & Johnson one-dose vaccine 
will arrive here in Bear County. But at the end of last week on Friday, Mayor Ron Nuremberg said more than 157,000 people in Bear County have been fully vaccinated. And as of this Wednesday, the mask mandate across the Lone Star State is set to be lifted. That allows businesses to decide how and if they'll enforce those safety precautions against COVID-19. And the announcement was made by Governor Greg Abbott, who also said that businesses can now run at 100 percent capacity. But what does that look like for our entertainment establishment? That's right. Alicia Brera live at a popular bar in the city's northwest side with more on their take. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, with that order reversed, Texas becomes the biggest state to lift that COVID-19 mask mandate. And of course, this just gives owners the choice if they'll require customers or even employees to have to wear a mask or keep socially distant in order to enter the establishment. Here in the case of Hills and Dales Ice House off 1604, starting Wednesday, things will go back to normal. So think about pre-pandemic. We spoke to Justin Vitek, owner of Hills and Dales, who says they're once again rebuilding their business plan to go back to pre-pandemic times where customers can once again go to the bar to sit or order their drink and they won't be confined to a certain table. Some strategies implemented during the pandemic will remain in place, and that's including the restaurant addition, servers, and hand sanitizer. But here's the owner's take on masks and capacity. I think a lot of people would agree that it's a little too soon for that, uh, including myself. But, you know, we're, we're going to honor it. You know, if people want to come here, we're not going to turn them away because there's going to be other places they can go that aren't going to worry about it. We're going to go back to 100 percent. It's, uh, you know, we're going to put some uh, guidelines in place. We're going to give free masks at the door. We're going to have hand sanitizer at every single table. Hills and Dales Ice House will not require customers to wear a mask in order to enter. But what about employees? I also asked Vitek if at least employees will be required to continue wearing masks and if he'd revisit his decision. He's on the fence and realizes either stance is controversial, but he did give us an answer. And we'll have that answer from Vitek in the next half hour here on GMSA. But we'll also hear from another bar owner on in downtown San Antonio and his take on what he's doing for his business, his customers and his employees. Max Sarah. Thank you, Alicia. And as she just said, that mask mandate set to officially end this coming Wednesday. Governor Greg Abbott says that Texas is in a far better position now with increasing vaccination numbers and more knowledge of how to manage the spread of COVID-19. Governor Abbott also pointing to the decreasing hospitalization rates and decreasing positivity rates. And local leaders across the state are not happy with the governor's decision. We spoke with Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf yesterday morning to get his take on this mass change for this week's leading essay segment. Just take a look. Good morning, Judge. Yes, yeah, good to be here with you. Thank you so much for joining us. So right off the bat, what was your immediate reaction when you found out the governor was repealing the mask mandate? Well, I thought it was a big mistake. Uh, we are on the downside. We probably got about three more months ahead of us to get this disease conquered. And to take this action at this time, I think was inappropriate. Um, sends mixed signals. He says to you, you should wear one, but he winks at you and say, but you don't have to. It's going to cause a lot of confusion, puts pressure on businesses that uh, may try to implement it on their own. And I, I thank them very much for doing that. Uh, but we still have people dying every day. We still have people going to the hospital every day. So we're not out of this yet. And we just want to do everything we can to make sure we don't have a third wave. And Judge, can you or other local leaders do anything to enforce mask wearing here locally? Uh, we, can't, we can't enforce it, I don't believe. Uh, but uh, I talked to Sheriff Salazar and businesses can require you to wear it. And I listed a number of them that have done so. And the sheriff has agreed to respond if a business calls and says this person is refusing to wear the face mask. Will you remove him? And he will respond and remove him. You can't force him to put the face mask on but he can remove him for trespassing against the uh, uh, business that he is in. Uh, speaking of businesses, do you have any issues with the governor saying he wanted to open up Texas 100%, opening up businesses to 100% capacity? I don't have any real trouble with that. Uh, my trouble is with the health standards that you have to have to be able to do that. Um, I was out at uh, Jim's restaurant yesterday, and Jimmy Haslocker is going to continue to do it. 
I, I, I go to a number of different places, whether it's Target or HEB or wherever, but uh, I feel very comfortable uh, because almost everybody is complying and wearing the face mask. And uh, now, you know, that's the gamble that the governor is taking. Uh, but I think businesses can uh, save us if they'll continue to require that. And one more question, Judge, before we let you go. Um, how do you see these, rule, these rules affecting our future COVID-19 numbers, especially with spring break uh, just right around the corner? Well, that's, that's a worry because uh, the people that are 20 to 29 years old make up 16% of our population, but they make up 21% of those that are getting COVID. Obviously, they go to bars and have a good time, and they know they're not going to get too sick. But they bring it home to mom and dad and grandpa and all the people that may have conditions, and many of them die. So it is a concern. Now, one more question, uh, real quick for you. How are those vaccination efforts going so far? They're going, well, if we had more, we'd be doing a lot better. Our hospital district, and I go out there at least two or three times a week, uh, we were doing as many as 6,000 a day. Uh, I think we've done a total now of about 170, 180,000. Uh, but it's still a long way to go. Don't forget, uh, no matter how many were vaccinated there, there are people from around the area that can come here under the state law. So we have a long way to go. Only 13% of Texans are vaccinated. Half the seniors were not best vaccinated yet. I don't know what the hell the governor was thinking, but I don't think he was thinking very straight. Well, Judge, thank you so much for being candid with us this morning and joining us. We really appreciate your time. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. Never a dull moment with the judge. Nope, he's always very honest. All right, it's 8, 11, and 52 degrees outside. All right, we are talking Spurs. It is officially All-Star Weekend. That means the first half of the season is over. We're going to tell you when the Spurs play next and how I'm frustrated that there are no Spurs in the All-Star game. Plus, making sure you get your life-saving cancer screenings, why it's vital to get routine colonoscopies back on track. And an outdoor internship opportunity for undergrad students after the break. Details on what kind of divisions you can learn about and when the deadline to apply is. I wish I would have done something like that when I was younger. Yeah, Get outside, good. enjoy nature. Like today, look how beautiful it is. 52 degrees right now this morning. The sun is out. Sarah Spivey says it'll most likely stick around. But what does the rest of our week look like? She'll let us know when we come back. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. If you're an undergrad student who loves the outdoors, listen up. Sounds really cool. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Department is now accepting summer intern applications. There are several divisions you can intern with, including law enforcement, wildlife, communications, and much more. Applications for the summer are due soon, though, so you have until Friday, March 26th. The internship runs from May 27th through August 1st and requires students to assist for 20 hours a week and on weekends. And for more information on the park's locations requirements and pay, just visit our website at ksat.com. Sarah, this is some I don't I didn't never thought about doing something mm. like that. Like it even That'd had a communications. Yeah. So even if you're not going into that field of, you know, being a biologist or, you know, Actually, there's a de that takes a degree to be out there. Absolutely, but and it's going to be cool. a great day, too, to enjoy some of our local parks because temperatures are already on the rise. Now, this morning, we had a low of 45 in San Antonio. The airport is reporting 49 degrees. Sunny skies out there, as you can tell. Uh, and we did have some temperatures in the 30s in some places, especially in the higher elevations. So I thought it would be a good idea to refresh everyone's memory about when our average last freeze is. Now, around San Antonio, that's February 24th, so at the end of February. But we have had freezes into March and even into April. Our latest freeze on record was April 3rd in 1987. For the Hill Country, the higher elevations, of course, the average last freeze is a little bit later. Areas like Kerrville, average last freeze comes toward the end of March. And this morning, Kerrville was 
down to the mid 30s, uh, but above freezing, thankfully. So we'll keep tabs on things, but it really doesn't look like we're going to see much of a chance for a freeze over the next 10 days here in San Antonio. So that's some good news. Now in today's time lapse, look at that beautiful sunrise that we saw earlier. A few clouds out there right around the time of sunrise, but we've seen a lot of those dissipate. And right now we're just dealing with uh, tons of sunshine and we're already on our way to see temperatures close to 70 degrees this afternoon. 41 now in Kerrville, 41 in Comfort, uh, 46 in Rio Medina, 46 in Hondo, 50 already in New Braunfels, and 48 in Canyon Lake. It's 50 degrees in Pleasanton, and it is pretty dry out there. Chapstick weather for some folks, dew points in the 30s and 40s. That dry air is going to make today really nice and pleasant uh, and allow for temperatures to warm up pretty quickly. 57 already at 10. Uh, we'll be at 65 at noon, and for the high temperature today in San Antonio, 70 degrees. Tonight will be nice and cool. Temperatures will fall to close to uh, in the 50s rather by about 10 o'clock. One difference from yesterday is yesterday our winds were pretty breezy from the northeast. Today our winds are going to turn around to the southeast at 5 to 15 miles per hour and I know we're in desperate need for some rain but it just doesn't look like we're going to see any kind of substantial rain in the next five to seven days. This is a look at rainfall potential through Thursday, and you can see that just about the entire state of Texas is going to be pretty dry. Even these uh, colors here, this green color, that's maybe maximum a hundredth of an inch of rain. And the reason why that's around San Antonio is because in the mornings this week, we could have some drizzle as humidity will be on the rise, patchy drizzle at least. So speaking of humidity on the rise, as I mentioned, today's going to be nice and pleasant. Tomorrow will be pretty dry too. We'll have one last low humidity day, but then by Tuesday afternoon and throughout the rest of the week, our dew points will be in the 60s, which we consider pretty muggy. Once those dew points get to near 60 degrees, you can notice the humidity outside. And again, that's going to result in a bit of a sunshine seesaw for us this week, where in the mornings we'll experience cloud cover Cover. It'll be near 60 degrees and we will have areas of patchy drizzle. But then in the afternoons, we're going to have some sun and we'll even spend some of the week near 80 degrees uh, in the afternoons uh, by about Wednesday and Thursday. So again, just to summarize everything for you, tomorrow's going to be a pretty nice day. Starting off chilly, 70 degrees for the high. We'll feel the humidity by Tuesday afternoon and then temperatures will climb to 80 degrees Wednesday and Thursday. A small chance for isolated rain on Friday and Saturday, but the best Best rain chance in the future honestly looks like Saturday night, Sunday, but that's still a little muddy and the computer models are not necessarily agreeing. So we'll keep you updated though about those rain chances. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Time now, 820, 52 degrees up. Well, a new study shows there may be a link between Alzheimer's, dementia, and risk factors for heart disease. Still ahead, what researchers say might aid in the prevention of this untreatable disease. Plus, well, the All Star game set for tonight. The Spurs. Won't be on the court. Up next, we're looking at the current standings and when the Spurs play next. Good morning. Welcome back and go Spurs. Go Spurs hitting the NBA All-Star break at seventh place in the West. They're sitting right now at 18 and 14. Now we've had to deal with injuries. We've had to deal with COVID. Silver and Black really have not been at full strength yet this season. And yet, they made it through the first half of the season the best they could, and right now they are in the thick of it when it comes to making the postseason. The All-Star game is today. No Spurs players in it, which is ridiculous because at least DeMar should be in it, but that's neither here nor there. So the entire team will have off for several days. Here's a current look at the standings midpoint through the season. As you can see, the Spurs, seven place. And as you can see, everyone else in that list has an all-star representative, except for the Spurs. It's ridiculous. Next time the Spurs will play will be Wednesday, March 10th, taking on their rivals. There you go, Dallas Mavericks, who are in eighth place and also have an all-star representative. Uh, you download it. Again, it's free. You fill out your information. Um, you you uh, do a few biometrics, take a selfie, and you're, you're ready to go for uh, game night. All right, time to make some room on your phone for some new apps. If you plan to go into the AT&T Center for a Spurs game, you're going to have to do some pregame work before you show up tonight on Instant Replay, KSAT 12 Sports, giving us some details that we need to know so we can enjoy cheering on the silver and black. Plus, tonight, NBA All-Star Game from Atlanta. The sports guys introduce you to an AUFC fighter making a name for himself on the city's south side. Make sure to watch Instant Replay right after the night beat. You want to give one of these again? Raise the roof. 
Well, I was. I just want to ask: Are you upset about the Spurs not having a player? I'm upset. He's upset. Well, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> All right, uh, 826. My, I can go on. My producer wants me to end. About 53 degrees out. All right, the mask mandate is coming to an end this week, but not everyone is on board with the decision. After the break, our Alicia Barreta talks to one local bar owner who says he is letting his customers make the decision. Plus the latest when it comes to the COVID relief bill, what the Senate decided on yesterday and what is next. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Sarah Costa. It is March 7th. Good job. So I never (laughs) I never know the actual date. I know today is Sunday. There you go. Thank you for waking up with us. Mm -hmm. St. Patty's Day in just a couple up. of days. Yeah. I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, I'm excited about the weather, though. 52 yes. degrees, Sarah Spivey, beautiful the, day. The leprechauns will be rejoicing. Well, well yes, <laughs> and so will I. <laughs> the weather today, it's going to be perfect, and I really mean that. We'll have low humidity, sunshine, and comfortable temperatures. It's already warming up out there, and we did just get the pollen count in. You know, juniper is moderate, but it was high yesterday, and juniper means all cedar trees, and that does include mountain cedar. Molds are moderate at 900, uh, and right on cue, Sarah Costa (laughs) sneezing in the background there. Uh, But yeah, we uh, are are seeing some improvement to the pollen count, but still, if you are sensitive to mold, uh, and if you're sensitive to juniper, you, you may have to take some of that allergy medicine today. Visible satellite, nothing to see here. Sunshine, a few clouds out in Bandera County and in northern Medina County. Uh, but out to the west, uh, an anomaly here with, uh, within the KSAT 12 viewing area, Valverde County has some clouds and some low clouds at that. Del Rio, uh, you're experiencing overcast skies, but even out to the west, those skies will gradually clear and it'll be a beautiful day. Uh, high temperatures today close to 70 degrees so we've got a little ways to go but we're already warming up we were at 45 at the airport this morning we're now at 49 41 in Kerrville 49 in Yavaldi 46 in Hondo uh, 40 50 rather in New Braunfels and in Gonzales 50 degrees in Laredo today is going to be a great day I told you that and look at that it's gorgeous mostly sunny 57 degrees at 10, low humidity and 65 at noon, 70 for that high, and southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Hard to complain about today's weather, but of course, as you know, we need the rain. Will we get rain in the next seven days? I'll have your forecast coming up in a few. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Sarah. Well, it's the last weekend that Texas will will require masks to be worn in public and businesses limit their capacity. That's right. As of Wednesday, the orders will be repealed, allowing Texans and businesses to decide. And our Alicia Barada, she is live outside one of San Antonio's most popular bars where they've made their decision clear on how they'll operate come March 10th. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, some people may not like it, and Hills and Dale's Ice House is aware they are expecting some backlash, but they've made the switch coming on March 10th, and that's they're not going to be requiring any masks for their customers, and capacity will be increased to 100%. So this is, of course, all abiding by Governor Greg Abbott's orders. Hills and Dale's Ice House owner, owner, who I spoke to, Justin Vitek, says his business has been abiding by all the rules to operate legally during a pandemic, including limiting the number of people at tables, transitioning into a restaurant, temperature checks at the door, and of course requiring masks. He admits he was surprised by the reversal of the order, but will once again honor Governor Greg Abbott's decision and give customers the choice. Here's what Vitek had to say about masks enforcement when it comes to his staff. Plus, we'll hear from another bar owner, Sergio Acosta, who runs Social Spot in downtown on what he's decided for his business, staff and customers. I would like to have them wear masks, but more than likely just going to lean towards having them uh, choose themselves. If they would like to wear one, they can wear one. If they don't want to wear one, I won't make them. But, you know, for us, to be honest, it's not going to change anything. I mean, that's kind of like, you know, long story short, it's just I think it's just too early. To, to kind of for, for us, at least as a business operationally, you know, and for our staff and, you know, for their families, it, for us to, you know, to, to just really just kind of let, let it all go. Um, we got to, we're still going to follow the same rules as before until, you know, until further notice. I'd say about 98% of our, our establishment is all patio. So we, we've been able to adjust. 
So two completely different takes. Social Spot says they have the advantage of being outdoors and being able to easily accommodate. For Acosta, he says being safe hasn't affected his profit. But in the case of Hills and Dales Ice House, Vitex says the mandates have affected his business in a negative way, but is confident his business will survive. No mask requirement and 100% capacity comes just in time for his bar. As he shared with me, that St. Patrick's Day is actually their biggest day. And instead of a cover charge, what Hills and Dales plans to do is that they're asking their customers to bring a non-perishable food item. All those donations will be will be given back to the San Antonio Food Bank. So again, a Hills and a Hills and Dales Ice House here not requiring a mask for their customers nor for their employees and 100 capacity, 100 percent capacity is expected as of Wednesday. Reporting live from the city's northwest side, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Well, Governor Greg Abbott announced Texas will fully fund school districts that have seen student attendance drop during the pandemic as long as they maintain or increase the rate of students learning in person. School superintendents have been awaiting this news for months with the pandemic and the switch to virtual learning, causing student enrollment and attendance to drop by more than 150,000 statewide between January of 2019 and 2021. Texas funds its public schools based on the number of students who attend, whether they are learning in person or virtually. As of this January, 56% of Texas public school students were learning in person. And leaders in Texas say they are now fighting censorship on social media. This week, Governor Greg Abbott spoke about Senate Bill 12, legislation that would allow Texas residents to sue social media companies if they feel they've been wrongly silenced. Senator Hughes' legislation does is it prohibits social media companies from censoring Texans based upon Texans' viewpoints. It would also allow any Texan who has been canceled or censored or deplatformed uh, to be able to file a lawsuit against Twitter, Facebook, or any of these other companies and make sure they are able to get back on so they can share their viewpoints so that we can have a robust conversation on all of these platforms about our political viewpoints. The Communications Decency Act protects social media companies from legal actions in these circumstances. Legal experts say even if the legislation was to pass, User agreements by social media companies would still protect the platforms. Millions of Americans are one step closer to getting some financial help after the Senate passed that $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief package. So that bill now has to go back to the House for a final vote. For the latest, here's ABC's Mary Alice Parks. The bill as amended is passed. Democratic senators applauding their final vote. And hours later, supporters clapping for President Biden, too. The end now in sight for Democrats as they push President Biden's massive COVID relief package through Congress. After a narrow party line vote in the Senate, the bill now heads back to the House for final passage. Democratic leaders, they're confident they can get the bill signed into law this week. Biden hopeful stimulus checks for families can then go out by the end of the month. The bill would send $1,400 direct payments to millions of Americans, and it allocates billions more for nutrition programs, rental assistance, small businesses, vaccine programs, and schools. Biden unable to secure even one Republican vote in the House or the Senate. The GOP sticking together, arguing the bill is too much government spending, and some funds are duplicative. The Senate has never spent $2 trillion in a more haphazard way or through a less rigorous process. So the House hoping to get this totally wrapped up early this week. Progressives over there signaling that they're not thrilled, but OK with the changes in the Senate bill. So we're not expecting a ton of drama over there. But this was supposed to be the easy one. President Biden had wanted to get Republican support, and now he's facing tough questions about the rest of his agenda. Bills only get more complicated from here. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, Capitol Hill. Also in your morning headlines, another woman who worked for Governor Andrew Cuomo is describing conduct she felt was inappropriate for the workplace. Analysts told Wall Street Journal that when she worked as an aide in 2013, Cuomo called her sweetheart, once kissed her hand and asked her personal questions, including whether she had a boyfriend. Liz said she initially considered Cuomo's behavior as harmless, but grew to feel it was it was inappropriate. 
Cuomo apologized Wednesday for behavior. He now realized he's upset people. Time now is 840, 54 degrees out. Well, March is Colon Cancer Awareness Month, and during the pandemic, many colonoscopies have been pushed back to help conserve equipment and supplies. Still ahead, why it's important to reschedule your appointment. And coming up after the break, taking control of your own health, anything you can do to help prevent or even prolong treatment untreatable diseases such as Alzheimer's. 54 degrees, look at that. It's beautiful outside. Sarah Spivey calling this a chef kiss perfect weather. Will we experience this perfect weather throughout the week? She'll let us know when we come back. As vaccinations ramp up and states ease restrictions, the $2 trillion COVID relief package and the boat. Today, the senator at the center of the debate, plus the secretary of defense. How will he respond to the attacks overseas on ABC's This Week? Prevention may be our greatest device in the fight against the incurable disease like dementia. That's right. So according to the CDC, in 2014, as many as 5 million Americans were living with Alzheimer's disease. So the number of people living with the disease said to double every five years among people over the age of 65. And it's expected to triple to nearly 14 million people by the year 2060. A recently published study by scientists in Spain may have actually found a link between Alzheimer's dementia and risk factors such as heart disease and high blood pressure. Researchers found evidence of subtle brain abnormalities in people who are at increased risk for heart disease, especially in areas of the brain related to Alzheimer's dementia. These brain abnormalities were most closely linked to high blood pressure, a treatable condition that can be controlled with diet, exercise and prescription medication from your doctor. A study suggests that gaining control of treatable condition may aid in the prevention of an untreatable disease such as Alzheimer's. March is Colon Cancer Awareness Month. When the pandemic began, you may have had your colonoscopy postponed for a short time, conserve equipment and conserve supplies. But these life-saving cancer screenings have been back for a while now. GMSA producer Jared Hoeing has more on why it's vital to get routine colonoscopies back on track. Medical centers have seen concerning declines in the number of people coming in for routine colonoscopies. Colorectal cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death in the United States, and doctors fear delays in screening and diagnosis may lead to more advanced stage cancers and poor outcomes. It's critically important that we continue with that health maintenance because it is something that we can stop in its tracks, lower those numbers of those high rates of cancer-related deaths in the U.S. and worldwide. Colorectal cancer is preventable when precancerous polyps are found and removed. That's why screening is so important. Dr. Steele says a colonoscopy is considered the gold standard in colorectal screening, but at-home options are available too. So there's a couple of different uh, tests that are out there, but in essence, it's essentially taking a piece of stool with something you can do right in the own comforts of your home to be able to take a sample of stool, wipe it on a car, send it in, and then that can be a screening test to see is there blood in the stool that would warrant another further investigation. The American Cancer Society recommends adults at average risk for colorectal cancer be screened at age 45. People at high risk, including those with a family history of polyps or colon cancer, may be due sooner. If you're worried about contracting COVID-19 at a medical facility, Dr. Steele says it may ease your mind to learn about the safety measures in place and encourages calling your doctor. Jared Hoeing, KSAT 12 News. All right, time now, 847, 54 degrees out. Are we going to weather? I guess so. We got Sarah Spivey on the screen. Sarah, beautiful yeah. day out there. Hey, Sarah. It's going to be a great day outside. I do want to check. We're doing full weather here, I think. Correct? I think so. Okay. Okay, awesome. okay let's do it. Let's go ahead and talk <laughs> about the weather in full. <laughs> full weather. All right. Right now outside, beautiful sunny skies, 49 degrees with the humidity pretty low. 38 degrees is the dew point temperature and humidity is going to stay low all day today. Low humidity, tons of sunshine, that is a great recipe for warming up. And as you can see, we're already warming up. It's still on the cool side, 49 degrees, but we started off the day at 45. Kerrville started off in the mid 30s and it's already 45 degrees, 52 in Del Rio. Again, Del Rio is kind of the oddball this morning because Del Rio has clouds, but the rest of us have tons of sunshine. But don't worry, Del Rio, you will see the sun today as well. 50 in Carrizo Springs, 52 in 
Chula, 52 in Gonzales, and 53 in Kennedy. Now, notice how the winds are fairly calm around San Antonio. Northeasterly breeze at only 3 miles per hour. But up toward Rock Springs, winds have turned around to the south, and that's going to be our pattern today. Our winds are going to turn around to the south and to the southeast at 5 to 15 miles per hour. We're going to see sunshine all day long, and it's going to be such a pleasant day. Temperatures, this is a look at high temperatures today, mid 60s for the hill country. But other than that, the rest of us will be near 70 degrees this afternoon, near 70 in Del Rio, Yavaldi, Carrizo Springs, even down toward Laredo and Catula, 70 here in San Antonio and along that I-35 corridor and out to the east near Gonzalez and Hallettsville, 70 degrees as well. And as I mentioned, the humidity is low. Dew points are in the 30s around San Antonio and around uh, the KSAT 12 viewing area. That is chapstick weather. And in fact, across the entire state, State, it's nice and dry and even across the entire nation. It's pretty dry as well. Dew points everywhere except for Miami, Florida in the dry range. A high pressure system is what is going to shape our weather over the next few days, keeping out rain. Yes, but it's also going to turn our winds around to the south and to the east. Notice how quiet it is across the continental US. No rain except for perhaps the Pacific Northwest. Just a little bit of isolated shower activity there. Uh, so today is going to be a great day. Mostly sunny 57 low humidity at noon 65 and pleasant 70 degrees for that high temperature. Southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. That high pressure system is going to move on off to the east and that's going to tap into some Gulf of Mexico moisture and send it our way. So it will be muggy by Tuesday afternoon. You will notice the mugginess and uh, that'll last through the end of the week. Something else that that's going to do is it's going to allow for morning clouds with some afternoon sunshine just about every day this week. Tuesday through Thursday, that 10% chance for rain it actually comes in the morning when we'll have a chance for patchy drizzle. But then by Friday and Saturday, isolated showers are possible. Still, the chance for rain is not great. The chance for substantial rain is zero over the next several days. However, Outside of the forecast period, Saturday night, Sunday, there are some indications that we could have a better chance for rain. I don't want to tease you, but I do want to keep your eyes toward the end of uh, this forecast period because Katie Blake will have an updated forecast for you tonight and she'll have a better understanding of what we can expect potentially on next Sunday. Other than that, it's going to be a warm week and muggy by Tuesday. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 851, 54 degrees out. One woman suffered unimaginable trauma as a toddler, and now she's speaking out tomorrow on GMSA how she turned her trauma into triumph. All right, before we head to bird, before we head to break, big birthday shout out my girlfriend Paige. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! To you, Paige. Happy birthday! On that note, we're gonna go to break. In the news you need to know before you go, police searching for a suspect they say robbed the Circle K in the 8100 block of Fredericksburg Road. Police tell us the man walked inside around 1.30 this morning, acting like he had a gun in his pocket, demanded the clerk gave him money from the cash register. After the clerk followed the directions, that suspect ran off. Right now, police still searching for him. And just a reminder that molds and juniper are elevated today. Both are moderate. Mold at 900, juniper at 270. We're already at 55 degrees. We're going to be warming up to 70 in the afternoon. Tomorrow we'll start off at 47, top off at 70. The week ahead is going to be cloudy in the morning and with a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon. That's going to be the pattern. And we'll have mugginess return by Tuesday. 80 degrees Wednesday, 81 on Thursday. A small chance for rain on Friday and Saturday. And again, we are holding out some hope for a better rain chance Saturday night and Sunday. We'll keep you updated in the forecast all throughout the rest of the weekend and into the week. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Sarah Costa, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. We got about 15 seconds left. What are you guys doing today? Outside all day long. Getting my car fixed. <laughs> Woo! Have a great rest of your Sunday. <laughs> Bye.